The Philips Hue PlaySync box does provide an awesome media immersive experience. However, out of the box, it really doesn't support Apple HomeKit. Now, thanks to this Homebridge plugin, we finally get that better HomeKit support to unlock that full surround lighting experience. Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. And I have done lot, tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, do you remember the Hyperion Ambilight project that I had done? Well, we really loved it. However, the only issue we had was that the HDMI splitter used in that project downgraded the video from 4K to 1080p, making the viewing experience not so good. Anyways, I took the leap and purchased the Philips Hue Play Sync box that supports 4K and HDR10 together with the hub, a pair of play bars, as well as a gradient light strip that supports a 65 inch screen. Plus I already had two blooms, which kind of made sense to invest in the product. So for all of this to work and integrate with Apple HomeKit and get the sync box to work, we will definitely need the Philips Hue sync box. We will also need a Philips Hue hub. Three, you'll need some kind of Philips Hue lighting. Now, just for demo's sake, I'll be using a pair of play bars. I do have the LED strip. However, I will only use it once I move into my new home, which is under construction. And lastly, to enable that integration, we will be using Homebridge. And don't worry, I've left links in the description on how to install this awesome software. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. So first up, let's get an overview on what this plugin can do. Now the sync box can be exposed as a light bulb with the following features. You can turn on and off and also control the brightness. It can also be controlled as a switch only supporting the on off function. Additionally, you can also enable TV accessories that support switching HDMI inputs, switching modes, switching intensity, or even switching entertainment areas. Now, last but not the least, since they are recognized as TV accessories, you can use the iOS remote widget to control the sync box. Basically, all of the functionality that you were getting from the Philips sync app is now available in the Apple Home app. Now, before we go ahead and install the plugin, you need to extract the token so that the plugin can communicate with the sync box across your local computer network. Now, there are three ways to get it, using a web browser, a command line, or even a tool like Postman. Basically, you have less than one second to get the token once you hold the power button. You need to wait until the LED switches to green. Immediately, you need to release the button and make the request to get the token. It's quite a juggle, although it's doable. It took me almost 10 tries to get it. Now, in this video, I will show you of extracting the token in a very simple way, just using a Python script. Basically, once the script is executed, it runs in a loop until you press and hold the power button and release it once you see the LED turn to green. The script then automatically captures the token. Easy. So to extract it, all you have to do is to make sure the sync box is on and at the same time, synchronization is stopped. Next, you need to access your router, DHCP settings and take note of the IP address. And also at the same time, you need to reserve it as we will use it in the plugin configuration. Now in this video, I'm going to show you the token extraction process using a Mac, which is the same as a PC, followed by using a Raspberry Pi where you, you may have your home bridge already installed. So let's go and get that token. Now, if you're using a Mac or a PC, you definitely need to have Python installed. So I've left the link in the description. All you have to do is go to downloads, all releases, or it will already show which version to download for your operating system. Now, once you have done that, the next step you have to do is access your router settings, go to devices, and you want to make sure you've gone and access the sync box and you know the IP address. In my case is 113 and I've gone and reserved it. So this is very important to do as well. Now, the third one is 
you want to make sure you have access to the link that I have left in the description to get the script. Now let's go ahead and create that script on your computer. So what you want to do is you want to go and open a text editor like Sublime. You want to click on new file and all you have to do is copy this text and paste. Now, just in case you don't know what Sublime is, I've created a fantastic video of the eight awesome DIY smart home apps that you need to have on your computer when you're building one. So go ahead and download Sublime if you don't have it. Now, once this is done, all you have to do is go to add in your IP address that was reserved. Let's go ahead and click on save. I'm going to save it on the desktop and I'm just going to call it a syncbox.py. Click on save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open in terminal. Now all I have to do is go and change the directory to the desktop. So I'm going to type. And the first thing I want to do is go and type Python 3. So now you have the Python version and then we're going to hold and type control Z. Now what we're going to do is first we're going to see if the file is located. So we can see that syncbox.py. Now I'm just going to type Python if you press the tab it automatically populates and I'm going to hit enter. Now you're going to see this error saying that it's in an invalid state. However, if you do see this error called as module not found, no module name request, you want to go ahead and install sudo pip3 install request. So it goes and install one more package just in case it doesn't work in the first time. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly go over hold on to the power button and I will release it once it turns green. And that's it. You can see that the access token was already captured. Now you can go ahead and skip to the plugin configuration. If not, I will go now and show you how you can capture the token using a Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and clear terminal and we'll go ahead and SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go and create a file to store all of that information. So I'm going to type sudo nano. So that's the file you want to create. You have to make sure it ends with .py, hit enter. And we're just going to go back to GitHub, copy this file, paste, and I'm just going to put in the IP address. Then I'm going to hold on to control X, Y, hit enter. Now let's go ahead and check if we have Python installed. Yes, we have hold control Z. Now what we're going to do is type Python 3 and the file that we just created. So sync box, hit tab, it auto populates, hit enter. So the IP address was wrong. That's why we got the error. So let's go ahead and fix it. So you want to make sure the IP address is always corrected. So in this case is 113 control X. Yes, enter. Now let's go ahead and try that command again. Now you see that it's going in a state of loop. I'll quickly go and press the and hold the power button until it turns green to capture the token. So there it is. We've got the token using a Raspberry Pi. Now either way, if you have more than one sync box, all you have to do is update the IP address in that script and run it again and go and press and hold the power button until it turns green, release it and you'll get the token. Now let's go and configure the plugin. So you want to go ahead and access the home bridge. You want to go to plugins and you want to go and type in Philips sync. Now there are three plugins over here. The one that I had tested is the one with dot 11 version. That's the most latest and is working as is. So I've gone ahead and installed the plugin. Now let's go and see the configuration. I'm going to click on settings. Now the first thing I, you want to add in is the IP address. So in this case is 113. You want to go ahead and paste the token information. And I've left the default on mode as video. Now the default off mode, I've left it as pass through. The reason being, if you have to put as power save, if you use any of the light bulb or the switch functionality, when you turn it off, the Philips sync box also turns off. When you leave it as pass through, if the values are zero as a light bulb, or even if the switch is off, the sync box doesn't turn off. So especially when you want to do automations, I saw it's much better. So I've left it as pass through. Now the base accessory type, I've left it as light bulb. So in this case, what happens is you can control the brightness 
and also turn off the synchronization when it's 0%. And I've also gone ahead and will show you how it looks in the Apple Home app. So in this case, this is the base accessory. So it shows up as a demo. And then when it's zero or off, it will stop synchronization. And then whenever whatever value you apply over here, it will increase or decrease the uh, brightness. So I've left it as a light bulb instead of a switch. Then from there, I've gone ahead and enabled the HDMI TV. So this way I can go and select the HDMI. So if I go ahead and show you how it looks, I can see four of the inputs over here. Now remember, you want to connect your 4K devices on HDMI 2 and 4 because that's the best way of getting the output quality to your TV instead of 1 and 3. So I've enabled the HDMI uh, settings and I've gone ahead and not enabled the light bulb as well as the light bulb because what happens is when you will see another slider within the configuration. So I'm just using the base accessory as the one for it. Then from here, if you want to go, you can enable the mode. That's up to you. So the same way you can go and enable the mode. You can even select what kind of icon it needs to be represented. And if you want, you can go and enable the light bulb. I've kept the intensity enabled. So I'll also show you when you enable light bulb, what it looks like in the configuration and entertainment I've left it as is, I'm not selected because I just have one area. You can select it if you have more than one. And if you have more than one sync box, all you have to do is click on add platform, go ahead and add in all of the information. So I don't have, I just have one. For configuration sake, you wanna make sure the base accessory is light bulb. So you have one control for the intensity as well as turning on and off the synchronization. And up to you if you want to enable HDMI, the modes, the intensity, as well as the entertainment area. In this case, any of the options you enable will show up as a TV accessory that you need to add in manually. So let's go ahead and save and restart HomeBridge service. So once it's rebooted, you'll see that they show up as TV accessories that you need to add in manually. So all you have to do is open up the Apple Home app, tap on add accessory, tap on more options and you will see the TV accessory pop up there. And then you can go ahead and add in this code, which is the same or scan the QR code. So that's how it looks. And within the Apple Home app, if I tap on accessories, you will get that light demo option over here. So you can control the intensity as well over here. I've left only the base accessory as is to control all of the functionality from starting and stopping the synchronization, even the brightness control. Now from here, I've added in this into my Plex movie automation and I've done a couple of videos on it. I've added it into the movie. So when my movie starts, you'll see that it's in the scene where it turns on and all of the intensity is automatically. And when the movie stops, it turns off. So it's that simple of how I enabled the Philips sync box into Apple HomeKit, giving you that ultimate immersion experience all bundled into the Apple Home app. Now, if you've liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I've got more HomeBridge plugins that you can go through and have a DIY smart home that supports Apple HomeKit ecosystem. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.